So epigenetics, as you all know, is the study of, of gene control. So epi means on top of genes. And epigenetics, at its most basic level, uh, is, is immediately on top of DNA are methylation marks that are specifically at, at cytosines that are next to guanines. So I may refer to CPG sites later in this talk. And these cytosines next to guanines are the only cytosines that, that can become methylated. There are additional epigenetic modifications which I won't be talking about today. Uh, and these are, these are marks on histones and also the, the chromosome structure above histones, which include nucleosomes and chromosomes. So why would we want to look at DNA methylation in childhood leukemia? DNA methylation is a changeable state in, in genes during cell development, and most DNA methylation changes occur very early in life. So we as adults with, with uh, somatic cells, as most of our, most of our organism, are, are fairly static in DNA methylation compared to what happened very early in, in, in germ cell development and, and embryogenesis. And it, it would make sense that these early events could, could, go, uh, could go awry and impact childhood cancer. Childhood cancer is not so much a disease of genetic changes compared to adults. So it may, it may more likely be related to developmental and epigenetic changes. DNA methylation states, even though they are, ch they are changeable, they can become a, a permanent fixture on a somatic cell. And these changes can have phenotypes which are as strong as mutations. Uh, for instance, if, if they're in promoter regions of a gene, they may effectively shut off a gene that, that, that could uh, normally intended to be active. Epigenetic controls are multifactorial multifactorial, and they are linked to the adaptation of a cell and organism to its environment. And more and more researchers are finding that there are these variable, variably methylated regions. Uh, Feinberg and Irizarry described that uh, such variably methylated regions are more closely associated with developmentally related genes than other genes in the genome. This suggests that DNA methylation is, is a primary mechanism by which we adapt to our own individual environment, and DNA methylation states may be a description of our past environment. So they, they may be good uh, markers of environmental exposures, uh, as well as uh, important for disease causation. If we look at all the epidemiologic causes of leukemia that uh, we, we and others are studying, uh, there, there aren't many things here that are known mutagens. Ionizing radiation, obviously, is one. Uh, but the rest of the list, uh, well, apart from smoking and perhaps some of the pesticides and perhaps paint sol solvents, uh, are, are not generally mutagens but may impact uh, DNA methylation states as, or our response to them may represent adaptations to um, Epigenetic states can be adaptations to, to exposure to these uh, chemicals. Other advantages of looking at DNA methylation in, in our study, it is the most accessible epigenetic mark to us as epidemiologists because we can use our stored DNA samples uh, and also our Guthrie cards. We do not need intact cells such as needed for other epigenetic marks. This uh, figure is probably one you've seen before, and it's simply a reminder of the, the enormous DNA methylation changes occurring early in life. So primordial germ cell, cells are relatively unmethylated. They become strongly methylated during their late development. After fertilization, there's a, there's a cleaning off of, of methylations, methylation marks, followed by um, strong methylation in somatic cells, which in most CPG sites in the genome are methylated at this point in early development when uh, there's a good chance when, if things could go wrong, they may impact disease. So as I mentioned before, our current research goals are to establish methylation patterns in normal B cell development, compare that to childhood leukemias, 
discover methylation patterns associated with environmental factors, and if we're fortunate to figure out how to do it, see if we, to, if we can trace DNA methylation changes in leukemias back to birth. So this, this diagram is in a nutshell what we're trying to accomplish. So um, there, there are a, a set of, of unknown, or at least to us at the beginning, unknown metastable CPG sites in, in pre-B cells. And by metastable, I mean CPG sites that, that are variable. And they're, they're variable both in, in development of pre-B cells, and they may vary uh, with, uh, the, with um, leukemogenesis, and they may vary with the environment. So we do want to describe which, which of these CPG sites are methylated in, methylate, or their methylation status in precursor B cells, how, how they change in, in leukemia, and also separately to identify what genes or CPG sites that change in response to environmental variables. Uh, the intersection of, of these two sets are, this is really our holy grail here, these are CPG sites which are both sensitive to the environment and also impact leukemogenesis in some way. That's the, the, the panel of CPG sites we would like to end up with at the end and, and assay those on additional neonatal blood spots from the, from the California Health Department. 